welcome to this session of uh, this class. So, we are, will be starting with the integral method of solution for solving the partial differential equation. In the last lecture, we have looked into the how similarity method of solution can be applied for the solution of uh, partial differential equation. Now, in this class, we will be looking into the integral method of analysis. Now, integral method of analysis are quite common when we are talking about the boundary layer analysis or boundary layer theory. So, for solution of boundary layer equation, one can use the integral method of solution in case of uh, you know three types of boundary layer, hydrodynamic boundary layer, thermal boundary layer and mass transfer boundary layer. one can utilize the integral method of solution. The only difference between the this solution and the similarity solution is that, uh, if you remember at y star is equal to infinity, that was one of the typical boundary condition in similarity solution, where we used to put c star is equal to u star is equal to t star is equal to 1. And when we, we evaluate the definite integral from 0 to infinity in similarity parameter, we, we said that uh, we have to carry out this thing uh, you know numerically, but infinity becomes a uh, becomes unknown. We have to put a upper limit, let us say 5 or 10, then you have to increase the upper limit from 10 to 15 and see whether the result of this integral changes or not. If it does not change over a over third or fourth decimal places for some value, then that will be given by the by the infinity. Now, that becomes a problem in case of integral method analysis, we are substituting this by the exact boundary condition. The what is the exact boundary condition at y star is equal to del star c star is equal to u star is equal to t star is equal to 1. And in effect, this del star becomes a function of deep independent variable either x star or t in case of transient analysis. So, therefore, this gives the, uh, the this is the only difference between the similarity solution and integral method solution. In case of integral method solution, we are replacing the boundary condition instead of y star equal to infinity, we are replacing it by the exact boundary condition at delta star. So, what is the advantage? The advantage is we will reduce the partial differential equation into an ordinary differential equation. So, that is the advantage of similarity solution. Now, we will take up an example of the similarity solution, uh, the, the integral method of solution. The example will be talking about the same problem on membrane based separation pro process as we have defined earlier. So, uh, this is a flow through a thin channel we will be considering a flow through a thin channel and it is a gel layer control in case now here there is a flow through a thin channel and on this is the membrane surface this is porous on it we put lots of you know particles they form a viscous layer known as the gel layer and over that there is a concentration profile this is at y is equal to delta. So, y starts from here x starts from there and the concentration within the gel layer is constant and it is gel layer concentration. Now, since the bulk concentration varies from C naught to C g and there, there exists a concentration profile within the concentration boundary layer or this is the mass transfer boundary layer. Now, within the mass transfer boundary layer C is a function of x and y and you will be getting the permeate flux which will be a function of x. So, therefore, uh, we, we are we, our, our aim is to find out what is the 
concentration profile C as a function of x and y in the mass transfer boundary layer. So, with that the we, we define that m. So, we write down the governing equation within the mass transfer boundary layer, the advective two dimensional equation becomes u del c del x plus v del c del y is equal to d del square c del y square the same that we have we have we have, we have done earlier. So, u becomes 3 u 0 y by h that is the velocity profile we have seen earlier in the thin channel and v is equal to minus v w y v w as a function of x. So, we have discussed about this uh, profile of velocity in the earlier class. So, I am just taking them as they are. So, we are going to solve this equation by making it non dimensional. So, let us make the equation non dimensional first. We make the equation non dimensional against these quantities x star is equal to x by L y star is equal to y by h c star is equal to c by c naught. So, this becomes 3 u 0 y by h we, we write down the we put the bound, uh, velocity profile del c del x minus v w del c del y is equal to d del square c del y square. Then we substitute the uh, non dimensional in terms of non dimensional variable this becomes 3 u 0 over L y star del c star del x star minus v w over h del c star del y star is equal to d h square del square c star del y star square. Multiply both side by h square by d. So, this becomes 3 u 0 h square over d l y star del c star del x star <coughs> minus v w h over d del c star del y star is equal to del square c star del y star square. Now, we have already seen that half height can be approximated as one fourth of equivalent diameter. So, therefore, in terms of equivalent diameter we will be having 3 by 16 u 0 d square by d l y star del c star del x star minus 1 over 4 v w d e by d del c star del y star is equal to del square c star del y star square. Okay. Next, we uh, we have we have already seen that u 0 d square d by d l is nothing but 3 by you know Reynolds Smith d by l and 1 by 4 v w d by d is nothing but the non dimensional Peclet number at the wall. So, we write it down 3 by 16 Reynolds Smith d by l y star del c star del x star minus p w del c star del y star is equal to del square c star del y star square. Okay. So, once we get that this is basically nothing but a constant it depends on the operating condition. So, let us write it down as a. So, this equation becomes a y star del c star del x star minus p e w del c star del y star is equal to del square c star del y star square. Okay. So, this becomes the governing equation and we have already derived this governing equation earlier. Now, let us put the initial and boundary condition at x star is equal to 0, we had c star is equal to 1 at y is equal to 0, uh, y is equal to delta, c star is equal to c naught. So, c, c is equal to c naught. So, c star is equal to 1 at y star equal to delta star. 
Now, let us put at y star is equal to 0 v w c plus d del c del y is equal to 0. So, that was the uh, you know boundary condition at y equal to 0. So, therefore, we make it non dimensional p e w c g star c at y star is equal to 0 is c g star that is constant plus del c star del y star is equal to 0. So, these three the, this is the initial uh, the con con condition at x star equal to 0, this is the condition at y star is equal to del star and this is the condition at y star is equal to 0. So, with this we assume a concentration profile of c star within the mass transfer boundary layer. So, next what we do? We assume a concentration profile within the mass transfer boundary layer. profile sister within mass transfer boundary layer and the necessary condition the, the mass transfer boundary the concentration profile sister should satisfy r at y star is equal to delta star sister is equal to 1 at y star is equal to delta star del c star del y star is equal to 0. These are the boundary layer conditions and any boundary layer must be satisfying these two condition. For a thermal boundary layer y star equal to delta star t star should have been 1 and del t star del y star should have been 0. And also we have a boundary condition that y star is equal to 0 c star is equal to c g star. So, therefore, there are three boundary condition the concentration profile must satisfy. So, at least we should have we should assume a quadratic concentration profile involving three constants. So, we assume a concentration profile c star is equal to c by c naught is equal to a 0 plus a 1 y star by del star plus a 2 y star by del star square. Since this concentration profile is assumed within the mass transfer boundary layer, we call the integral method as approximate analysis. Now, we, uh, we, we apply these three boundary conditions and see what you get at y star is equal to 0, c star is equal to c g star. Therefore, c g star is nothing but a 0 the last two term will vanish. So, therefore, the concentration profile looks something like this c star is equal to c g star plus a 1 y star by del star plus a 2 y star by del star square. Okay. So, that goes the concentration profile. Now, we have two, 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 equal, two constants to be evaluated a 1 and a 2. Let us utilize the two boundary conditions the concentration profile must satisfy at y star is equal to delta star we had c star is equal to 1. So, this therefore, 1 is equal to c g star plus a 1 plus a 2 and at y star is equal to delta star del c star del y star is equal to 0. So, we have 0 is equal to a 1 by delta star plus 2 a 2 y star by del star square evaluated at y star is equal to delta star. So, 1 delta star will be cancelling over here. So, 1 will be cancelling from there in the denominator. So, this becomes a 1 becomes minus 2 a 2. Now, we combine these two boundary conditions and get a 1 and a 2. 
So, we will be getting 1 is equal to C G star minus 2 A 2 plus A 2 is equal to C G star minus A 2. So, therefore, A 2 becomes C G star minus 1 and A 1 becomes minus 2 C G star minus 1. So, therefore, we get the concentration profile C star as C G star minus 2 C G star minus 1 Y star by del star plus C G star minus 1 Y star by del star square. So, that gives the concentration profile. Now, in this concentration profile everything is known except how del star varies as a function of x star that is left behind and using the integral method of solution we are exactly going to do that. So, let us look into the governing equation. The governing equation becomes a y star del c star del x star minus p w del c star del y star is equal to del square c star del y star square and we have the concentration profile as c star is equal to c g star minus 2 c g star minus 1 y star by del star plus c g star minus 1 y star by del star square of that. So, del c star what do we do next exactly like the earlier we evaluate different derivatives del del x star of c, uh, of c star del del y star of c star del square del y star square of c star from this governing from this profile and substitute back to the governing equation. So, del c star del x star is nothing but 2 c g star minus 1 y star. So, del star square. So, it will be minus del star square. So, minus minus plus d del star d x star plus C G star minus 1. Similarly, Y star square by del star cube minus 2 D del star D x star. So, I take 2 C G star minus 1 D del star D x star common. So, this becomes Y star by del star square minus y star square by del star cube. So, that goes for del c star del x star then we use we take the derivative del c star del y star is equal to minus 2 c g star minus 1 over delta star plus c g star minus 1 2 y star by del star square and del square c star del y star square will be 2 c g star minus 1 over del star square. So, we take the derivative of this equation and this becomes 2 c g star minus 1 del star square. Okay. Now, we, we write down the governing equation. So, we just substitute everything there and see what we get. Now, before that we we utilize the governing equation at uh, okay, uh, a we substitute the derivative a y star del c star del x star is nothing but 2 c g star minus 1 y star by del star square d del star d x star plus okay, uh, my, uh, plus p w and del c star del y star okay, minus p w del c star del y star is uh, we take 2 c g star minus 1 common to c g star minus 1 common. So, this becomes minus 1 by del star plus uh, y star 
by del star square okay, is equal to del square c del OSS. So, this becomes 2 c g star minus 1 over del star square. So, we cancel both side by 2 c g star minus 1. So, it goes off. So, this becomes a y star square Okay, this will be d del star d x star. So, y star del star square minus we had one more term y star square by delta star cube. So, this will be common. So, a what will be getting is a y star square del star square minus y star cube del star cube d delta star d x star minus p e w minus 1 by delta star plus y star by delta star square is equal to 1 over delta star square. Next what we do? We take 0 th moment of this equation that means multiply both sides by multiply both sides by uh, y to the power 0 d y and integrate over 0 to del star that is the boundary layer thickness. So, we multiply both sides by y to the power 0 d y. So, a in d delta star d x star this is a sole function of x. So, it will be taken out of the integral sign 0 to del star y star square divided by del star square minus y star cube divided by del star cube d y star okay, minus p w that is a function of x only. So, it will be minus 1 by del star plus y star by del star square 0 to del star d y star is equal to 1 by del star square d y star 0 to del star. So, we carry out this integration this becomes a d del star d x star and this will be delta star cube divided by 3. So, it will be delta star by 3 minus delta star by 4 after integration minus p w. So, after integration it will be minus 1 delta star delta star will be cancelled out it will be plus y square by 2. So, it will be half, but delta star square will be cancelled out and you will be having a delta star over here in the numerator you will be having delta star square in the denominator. So, 1 will be cancelled out. So, this becomes a delta uh, and this will be delta star by 12 a delta star by 12 d delta star d x star this will be minus half. So, minus minus plus p w by 2 is equal to 1 by del star. So, you will be having a delta star square by 12 d delta star d x star plus 1 plus uh, p w delta star by 2 is equal to 1. this becomes the governing equation. Now, p w is a function of x and delta star will be also a function of x. This equation can still be simplified by the boundary condition at x at y is equal to 0. If you look into the boundary condition at y is equal to 0 at y star is equal to 0 p e w c g star plus del c star del y star is equal to 0. Now, if you look into the derivative of del c star del y star. So, it becomes minus 2 c g star minus 1 over 
del star plus c g star minus 1 2 y star by del star square. Now, evaluated at y star is equal to 0. So, this term will be gone. So, we will be having simply minus 2 c g star minus 1 over delta star. So, p w so substituting over here. So, p w c g is equal to 2 c g star minus 1 over delta star. So, we will be having p w delta star by 2 is nothing but c g star minus 1 divided by c g star. Therefore, we substitute this in the governing equation a del star square by 12 d del star d x star plus p w del star by 2 is equal to 1. So, we substitute this here. So, what we get is a del square 12 d del star d x star is equal to 1 minus c g star minus 1 divided by c g star. So, it will be getting c is still be cancelling out in the numerator. So, it will be simply c g star. So, the governing equation of del star square will be nothing but del star square d del star d x star is equal to 12 a c g star. So, we carry out the integration and integration will be from 0 to let us say um, um, uh, x star in this and delta star will be here. So, at x is equal to 0 my delta star is equal to 0. So, with this we evaluate the boundary condition and we will be getting that delta square d delta star is equal to 12 by a c g star d x star. So, once we get that we carry out this integration from 0 to del star from 0 to x star. So, delta star cube by 3 is equal to 12 a c g star x star. So, delta star now becomes 12 by 12 into 3 a c g star x star. So, this becomes 36 a c g star x star. Uh, this is delta star cube. So, therefore, delta star becomes 36 by a c g star to the power 1 upon 3 and x star to the power 1 upon 3. So, if you now recall that this is the functional form how del star is varying as a function of x star in case of similarity solution. In case of some similarity solution, delta star was a function of x star and the functional variation was x star to the power 1 upon 3. In integral method of calcul in integral method of solution also we have found out that delta star is varying as a function of x star to the power 1 upon 3 with the with the coefficient 36 a c g star raised to the power 1 upon 3. Now, that completes the solution. If you look into the concentration profile, which is a function of x star and y star, this becomes c g star minus 2 c g star minus 1 y star by del star plus c g star minus 1 y star by del star square. So, where my del star can be written as explicitly 36 divided by a c g star raised to the power 1 upon 3 x star to the power 1 upon 3. So, we substitute delta star as a function of x star over here and you will be getting completely c star as a function of x star and y star. So, we get the concentration profile within the boundary layer.
Okay. So, so this example clearly demonstrates that how integral method of solution can be applied to boundary layer analysis in in chemical engineering applications. So, let us summarize different steps. Uh, first, you write down the governing equation and boundary conditions. Next, you assume a concentration profile that is why it is known as approximate integral method. Once you assume a concentration profile, then third step is evaluate constants in concentration profile from suitable boundary conditions. Now, among the suitable boundary condition, the boundary layer conditions must be satisfied that at y star is equal to delta star, c star is equal to 1 and del c star del y star is equal to 0 and corresponding to velocity and thermal boundary layer, you will be having the corresponding conditions. Then get the derivatives of concentration with respect to x and y, then substitute them in the governing equation after that take the 0th moment that means you multiply both side by y to the power 0 d y and then integrate across the boundary layer thickness 0 to delta simplify after integration in y what you will be getting is, is that you will be getting the governing equation of delta star which is nothing but an ordinary differential equation then integrate it out with initial condition at x star is equal to 0 del star is equal to 0 then what we will be getting is that we will be getting an analytical solution of delta star as a function of x star and the final step is that once you know the del star as a function of x star analytically then you substitute that in the concentration profile and from the concentration profile you will be getting concentration within the mass transfer boundary layer as a function of x star and y star. In fact, this is the similar the similar type of approach should be taken for calculation of temperature profile within the thermal boundary layer, velocity profile within the hydronic boundary layer and we can successfully utilize the integral method of solution for the uh, uh, for the solution of boundary layer analysis in chemical engineering problem. So, we complete the integral method of solution, next we look into the Laplace transform method. this method belongs to the family of integral transform. So, Laplace transform belongs to family of integral transform ok. Now, integral transforms can be applied if and only if your governing partial differential equation or ordinary differential equations are linear. For linear governing equations only the integral method of solution can be can, can be integral method of uh, integral transform methods can be applicable. So, general integral transformation
can be written in this form uh, f s is the transform of function f t and then the de definition f s is if f s is the transform of f t then f s can be written as a to b k of s t f of t d t. This k of s t is known as kernel of integral transform. Okay. So, this is known as the kernel of integral transform and these kernels and limits of various transforms are given below. Now, we just put transform in a tabular form then k of s t that is the kernel lower limit a the upper limit b. So, if it is a Laplace transform then kernel is e to the power minus s t this is from 0 to infinity Fourier is 1 over root over 2 pi e to the power i s t minus infinity to plus infinity, then Fourier trans sign transform this becomes root over 2 over pi sin s t 0 to infinity Fourier cosine transform this becomes root over 2 over pi cosine s t 0 to infinity Hankel transform t nth order Bessel function s t 0 to infinity Mellin transform e to the power s minus 1 0 to infinity. So, these are the various kernels lower limit and upper limit of the uh, in, uh, of, of the transform for various types of transform and then let us concentrate on Laplace transform and how this transform can be utilized for the solution of linear partial differential equation. L is called the Laplace operator l of f t is nothing but 0 to infinity e to the power minus s t f t d t. So, e to the power minus s t is the kernel. Now, let us look into the various properties of Laplace transform. The first property is Laplace of C 1 F 1 T plus C 2 F 2 T should be is equal to C 1 L F 1 T plus C 2 L F 2 T. So, this is nothing but C 1 F 1 S plus C 2 F 2 S where C 1, C 2 are constants F 1, F 2 which are the function of S are Laplace transform 
of f 1 t and f 2 t. The second property is that if a function f of t is multiplied by e to the power a t, the resultant transform is obtained by replacing s by s minus a in the transform of original function. That is the second property it should satisfy. So, therefore, we you just write it down in a neat form compact form L of e to the power a t f of t should be is equal to f of s minus a. That means, if f of s is the Laplace transform of f t, then Laplace transform of e to the power a t of f t is nothing but I just replace s by s minus a in the transform, where so in this equation where f s is transform of f t. Okay. Third, third important property is the differentiation property. Laplace of f of n t, n means nth order of differentiation is nothing but s n s to the power n f s minus s to the power n minus 1 f of 0 minus s to the power n minus 2 f of 0 minus s f to the power n minus 2 0 plus f n minus 1 0. So, Laplace transform of f double prime t is nothing but s square f of s minus s f evaluated at t is equal to 0 minus del f del t evaluated at t is equal to 0. Laplace of f triple prime t is nothing but s cube of f s minus s square of f of 0 minus s f prime at 0 minus f double prime evaluated at 0. Okay. Next we create the once we get the transform then we get the inverse transform. What is inverse transform? f of t can be obtained by taking the Laplace inverse of f s. So, we can get from s to t domain. Now, let us get some of the uh, f of t and what are the corresponding Laplace transform in s domain. So, for 0 this is 0, for 1 this is 1 over s, for e to the power a t this will be 1 over s minus a, for e to the power minus a t this will be 1 over s plus a, for t it will be nothing but 1 over s square for sin a t this will be a divided by s square plus s square for cosine a t this will be s divided by s square plus s square. So, these are the these are some of the typical uh, you know Laplace transform of some simple function in uh, s domain from t domain. So, 
the, these functions are quite common. In fact, in the uh, book of Krasik or any such you know fundamental books which are applicable for first year uh, courses, undergraduate courses, there is a there are hosts of you know hosts of some functions are available in the tabular form where the Laplace transform are given. Now, let us with this background of Laplace transform, let us see how this Laplace transform can be utilized for the solution of partial differential equation. Now, Laplace of if u is function of x and t, then Laplace of del u del t is written as s u x and s minus u x evaluated at time t is equal to 0, where capital U is basically the transform function, where we have transformed t into s domain. So, u x s is nothing but Laplace of u x t. So, this will be nothing but 0 to infinity e to the power minus s t u d t. So, we can prove this thing and the proof goes like this Laplace of del u del t is nothing but 0 to infinity e to the power minus s t del u del t d t. So, this becomes e to the power minus s t u 0 to infinity first function this is the first function integral of the second fun function minus differentiation of the first function 0 to infinity minus minus plus e to the power minus s t integration of the second function u d t. So, I take e to the power minus infinity is 0 and at time t is equal to 0. So, this becomes minus. So, first first term will be 0 minus e to the power 0 is 1. So, u x at t is equal to 0 plus s 0 to infinity e to the power minus s t u d t. So, what is this? This is nothing but capital U as a function of x and s. So, this will be nothing but minus u x t is equal to 0 plus s u of x and s. So, that is the uh, uh, Laplace of del u del t. Similarly, one can prove that Laplace of del square u del t square is same as s square u x s minus s u x at 0 minus del u del t at t is equal to 0. Similarly, one can prove Laplace of del u del x is nothing but d u d s, where x this is a function of u is a function of x and s. So, this we can prove Laplace of del u del x is nothing but 0 to infinity e to the power minus s t del u del x d t. So, this since this integral is over t. So, we can take del u del x one can one, can, one we can take d d x outside. So, outside it becomes d d x 0 to infinity e to the power minus s t u d t. So, what is this? This will be nothing but capital U the Laplace transform of of f of t. So, of, of small u. So, therefore, this is nothing but d u d x. Similarly, one can prove that Laplace of del square u del x square is nothing but d square u d x square. So, with this you know you, you can you can get different derivative with this the Laplace in, in, in Laplace transform of various derivatives are presented in the s domain from t domain. With this we will be in a position to formulate the first example to take up the first example that is 
del u del t is equal to del square u del x square at t is equal to 0, u is equal to 1 plus sin pi x and at x is equal to 0, we have u is equal to 1 at x is equal to 1, we have u is equal to 1. See, this governing equation is a linear and homogeneous, we have a non-homogeneous term as the initial conditions and both the boundary conditions are homogeneous are, are non-homogeneous. So, therefore, we are going to solve this equation using Laplace transform. So, what do we do? We take Laplace transform on both sides. If we do that, it will be we multiply it by e to the power minus s t and integrate from 0 to infinity del u del t d t from 0 to infinity e to the power minus s t del square u del x square d t. So, this becomes s u of x and s minus u x at time t is equal to 0 is equal to d square u d x square. We have already proved that and what is u at time t is equal to 0 that is the initial condition. So, therefore, we will be getting the governing equation of d square u d x square minus s u is equal to minus 1 plus sin pi x. So, what is essentially the message is that by using this tra integral transform, we are able to get down the partial differential equation into an ordinary differential equation. If you look into the similarity transformation integral method as well as the Laplace transform, we have seen in all the cases that uh, all the cases the partial differential equation has boiled down into an ordinary differential equation and the solution of ordinary differential equations are quite simpler. So, we will take up this problem in the next class and solve this problem completely. So, I stop here, here in this class, next we will talk about more detail the solution of this problem or then I will be taking up couple of more examples of how to uh, of application of Laplace transform for solution of partial differential equations which will be more common in uh, you know transient uh, chemical engineering processes. Thank you very much.